dot product of geometric vectors. If a dot b equals to b dot c, then a equals to c. Explain with an example that the above statement is not always true for non-zero vectors. So this is a very interesting question. If we have a dot b equals to b dot c, it does not mean that a and c will be equal, right? They could be different. So we need to explain this with an example. As such, you know what a dot b is, right? a dot b is magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cos of angle between them. Now, b dot c, vector b dot c will be magnitude of, let me write c on this side now, times b and cos of angle between these two vectors. So that angle could be phi different. Do you see that? So when you say that a dot b is equals to b dot c, then actually what are you saying? Then you are saying that a cos theta equals to c cos alpha. Do you understand? So this actually means if you compare this, you are saying these two things are equal, right? So let me equate it for you now. So let me equate it on this side so that you understand. So we are saying that a dot b equals to b dot c. That means these two things are equal. That means these two things are equal, right? So let me write this as, that means a times b cos theta equals to c magnitude times b magnitude cos of phi, right? Because vector c could have a different angle with vector b, right? So if you compare these two and all are scalar quantities, you get magnitude of a cos theta is actually equals to magnitude of c cos of phi, right? We don't get a equals to c. Do you see that? Therefore, this statement is false, right? So this is a false statement. And you can take examples to show that, right? So let me take one example here. Let's take one case, which is, let's put magnitude of a equals to 8, magnitude of b equals to 3, right? And uh, let us say the angle between them is 30 degrees. And then let's also take another vector. Let us say instead of a, we are taking c. And let c be, let me write b first. b will be same. We want that to be 3. That is magnitude, right? And let's change the angle to 30 to 60 degrees, right? And here we can take magnitude of 8, c as 8 square root 3. Do you understand? Now, if you find a dot b, then what will you get? So, in the first case, a dot b will be equal to, if you calculate 8 times 3 is 24, and cos of 30 degrees. Well, let's make a triangle. Let's make a triangle and then see for ourselves what should it be, right? And how do you get these numbers? So, that is our 60 degrees triangle, right? So where this angle is 60 degrees and you know the ratio of the sides will be 2, 1 and this one is square root 3. Is that okay? So when we do angle of 30 degrees, that is angle of 30 degrees. So A dot B cos of 30 degrees will be 8 times 324. So we get magnitudes is 8 times 324. So we get 24 times cos of 30. Cos of 30 is square root 3 over 2. Now here we have 8 a dot b. Instead of a dot b now we have c dot b, right? So c dot b will give us 8 square root 3. 8 square root 3. That is c. And b is 3 times 3. And then what is cos of 60? Half. 1 over 2, right? 1 over 2. So what do we get? We get 8 times 3 as 24, square root 3 over 2. Do you see that? Same combination. So basically there are three scalar quantities which are getting multiplied and we can have numerous combinations to give this result. So effectively if that is the case then the rule is that
magnitude of a cos theta should be equal to magnitude of c cos phi the angle which a and c are making with b that is kind of critical right so that is how you have to see it correct so that is how you need to understand this question therefore remember if we say that a dot b equals to b dot c it does not mean that a will be c right a and c are different vectors I hope you understand. Thank you.